Hey, uh, a lot of people have been asking about powering their Arduinos and powering their motors and how do they deal with everything. You got servo motors in there, you got some LEDs in there, you got your Arduinos in there, you got your big DC motors. How do you power them? Now, what I like to use, I'm using like these larger, larger-ish um, lithium polymer battery packs. Sorry, upside down here. This one's a 5.2 amp hour one. Um, and I won't get into exactly, you know, all that much about battery chemistries and all that kind of stuff. But you, you the, I choose these because they are, you know, basically very light and high voltage uh, for what they are. These are like a 15, 15.2 volts, but I've got ones that are like 11 point uh, some odd volts for, for practical purposes, 12 volts. But then, you know, there's also batteries that are like seven and a half volts. Uh, this is like 10 and a half volts, this guy here little battery pack I pulled out of a, of a plane. Um, and the issue is, well, how do you power an Arduino with this? Um, a lot of the time, if you've, if you've dealt with Arduinos, you may have dealt with, you know, something like this. Um, basically, you're used to using just a wall, little wall wart transformer. Chances are it's 9 volts. Uh, Arduinos, uh, let me pull up an Arduino here. Here's a little Arduino, your basic Uno. And you'll notice in here, a lot of people just love to plug in a nine volt power supply in there and away you go. Uh, the typical Arduinos are uh, basically designed so that you could put uh, seven to 12 volts in here and bang, Bob's your uncle, away they go. Um, you can also power them off USB, which is typically five volts on here. And that's great if you're tethering yourself to a computer. But in the case that you are actually going to a robot or something that is, uh, that is autonomous and you know runs around on its own, Obviously, you want to get into using batteries. So here's one option that uh, I like for certain applications. Uh, it's basically, it uh, allows me to put a nine volt battery on the end of the, of the typical DC jack. And if I plug that in, you will see some activity on the Arduino, basically lights up and away you go. Now that's one easy way to do it. And that's fine if say you're doing a, uh, a remote control or some kind of handheld thing, that's fine. You know, nine volt batteries, you know, they, they, they hold a reasonable amount of juice for that sort of thing. But in the case of a robot, chances are you're gonna want some uh, something more exciting than that. And I have a mega here, it's uh, the same thing, same rule of supply. Ta-da! Hopefully there's a light on there somewhere. Yep, away she goes. Now, um, you can use that same jack if you want, uh, if you have between uh, seven and 12 volts to power your Arduino. And uh, the issue there is, of course, your battery. Now, a lot of these batteries, they are 12 volts, but they might be supplying more than 12 volts. Some of them even, like, these, like I said, this guy's like 15.2. So obviously I don't wanna run that directly into my Arduino, so what do I do? Now, first off I should tell you, getting power into the Arduino, not using either of these ports, say instead you wanna power it directly. And if you look at your Arduino carefully, on here, you'll see on the bottom row, there's gonna be a V in uh, somewhere on there. And you can probably see that easier, better than I can at this point. You're gonna see a V in, that's voltage in. And that can generally between, uh, that can be between say six and 12 volts. Uh, it's uh, basically on the other side of the power diode and some, some stuff uh, that's on, on this side here. So it's a little bit uh, more of a direct route and this will generally take six to 12, whereas people like seven to 12 on this side is sort of the re recommendation. So I generally go in with six volts on, V in, there it is, it's the last one right there. You already saw that, of course. So let's go six volts in there. So how do we get to six volts is the question. Now, in RC land, uh, a lot of the time you are powering things like servos. Now I pulled out the guts of a little plane here. It had two servos in it. It had a little regular DC motor. Um, you know, just a, this is kind of a junky old thing. And uh, here's some, you know, the switches for the batteries. And it had, also had a little uh, receiver, a little RC receiver here. Okay, now obviously the RC receiver and the servos, they wanna get like 4.85 volts or so, somewhere around six volts. So, um, 
and the, and the uh, motor is probably more than that, maybe a nine volt motor or something like that, or 10 and a half is I guess what the battery pack is. So, okay, uh, here's the original battery pack. It came in and it went to the motor, but it also, this guy here would power the, um, the servos. So how did it get from my battery pack? Which says, you know, it's seven, I think that's, sorry, seven times triple A, so that's like 10 and a half volts, to powering my servos and stuff. Now, in here is, I think, where the magic is on this particular one. Come on, zoom in, not on me. Well, anyway, let's cut that open. Now, what we should find in here is some type of basically transformer regulator power supply deal um, that is going to convert. Yeah, there it is. Our, um, you see, our power going in, which I believe probably also goes right to our. Looks like it goes more or less, more or less right to our DC motor here. But also, it has a little bit of control. I think it probably has some switching. Um, uh, you know how this controls things and whatnot. But then also we wind up with some uh, voltage going out here. That's going to then power our. Uh, so this is typically this looks like a regulator right here. Some kind of. That's why it's got that uh, little heat sink on there. So it's basically dissipating a little bit of power while it changes whatever incoming voltage, uh, converts it over to, in our case, probably five volts, six volts, something like that. Now, I'm not recommending you go out and cannibalize your RC stuff for this necessarily. What you can do, you can buy those parts separately, of course. You can buy everything in RC separately. Uh, come on. There we go. Now this is called, that, that little box, that the little thing we pulled out there is called a UBEC or a BEC. It's a battery elimination circuit or a universal battery elimination circuit. And it's basically, in this case, it's got a buzzer on it. This is a little fancier, but these are still pretty cheap. I think you can get these for, I don't know, I bought a pack of five of them that were probably like 10 bucks or something like that. Um, and these are cool because you can switch them. You can say, oh, I want, you know, 6.1 or 5.1 volts on them. And they have a little, <clears throat> a little buzzer on them. So when the battery power starts to drain uh, and you don't have enough uh, power to, to, it'll buzz and alarm you and so on. But anyway, you have the output here, which is going to be your 5.1 or your 6.1 volts and your input, which can be, you know, whatever it's spec to, uh, 6 to 23 volt input. And uh, this is good for three amps, for up to three amps being pulled off it. So that's more than enough for your Arduino or for uh, some servo motors and things, or at least some, some smaller servo motors. Okay, so if I take this now, and I'm gonna see if I can kind of show this down here. And adjust that, maybe zoom a little bit. I don't know if I can. No. Anyway, I'm gonna take this battery, or maybe this battery. They're just, I don't know what they're at right now, where the charge is at. <laughs> and this is, uh, where did I got some? I got some uh, alligator clips here, so it's not gonna be the most dangerous or you know thing in the world. So we'll alligator clip these and we'll try to be kind of careful about where things wind up so that we don't, uh, these batteries are capable of, of putting out a reasonable amount of current. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that would be something I don't necessarily want to shock myself with one of these batteries. So I'll bring that over there and connect that on up. I like to get in the habit of doing, you know, just I like to do negative first and put that in. And we will see a little light light up. Okay. And now if we look over here, hopefully you can see this. I'll try to put it, maybe I'll put it up like that. So you can see the letter. Can you see the better? 
Ah, maybe I better leave it down there like that. And let's bring this guy back up. And if we, pff, look what I picked up thinking it picked. That's not a probe. This is a probe. Uh, and we're gonna just jam these in here on the bottoms carefully. There's that. And that and we should see 6.09 that's pretty good it's supposed to be 6.1 6.09 not so bad okay and if we look at the the supply side we're going to see that it is actually supplying 11.5 right so that's nice now we have 6 volts coming out 6.1 if i switch this over i shouldn't be just doing this blindly but there, we switched it over. And carefully touch that, touch that. 5.27, oh, that's a little hot, a little hot. That's what I get for buying inexpensive stuff. Uh, that's from Hobby King, but it's really good. Anyway, so you take the 6.1 out of there, and from there you feed your V in on your Arduino. So then the question is, well, okay, how do I get the power to my, say, servo motor? Well, you can take that same power out of here if you want. Uh, you can split it, you can put a little uh, terminal block on there and take that power, as long as it's less than three amps total, you can power up any uh, additional, say you had you know, one of these servos that wanted to run at like six volts. You could run that, connect that up to that same five volt, um, and then run your uh, your Arduino off of it as well. No big deal. Or you can use multiple UBEX, or say you need something different from 6.1 or 5.1 volts, you could have a little, uh, you can buy these, and basically, you know, essentially these are these are a, uh, a variable UBEX, you can think of it that way, they're little just uh, transforms, little DC transformers, and these have a little uh, potentiometer on them, and you can adjust them. So let me show you what that does. You can see it starts to beep because it gets nervous that there's no power there. And that's the purpose of this thing. Okay, so I'm going to attach that carefully because it is live. Still plugged into my battery. Oh, now I'm not. And attach that there. Attach that there. Try to keep them separated, as the song goes. And everyone's laughing at me saying, oh, he's gonna electric himself. Well, maybe. That'd be good entertainment, huh? And now, that's not even touching. Try not to mm, let out any la magic smoke here, or shock myself. Hopefully you can still see this, and I'm gonna to touch this and this. And you can see that was set for 6.04 volts at the moment. Now, if I wanted to change that, I'm just gonna to try to tweak that by hand a little bit. Use my thumb. Hmm. Not doing too good of a job tweaking here. How about that? There we go. So I adjusted it down to 5.56 volts. So with these little transformers, these little power regulator transformers, whatever you want to call them, um, you can find them on uh, eBay or Amazon or, you know, just little uh, DC to DC transformers or DC to DC converters, voltage regulators, voltage converters, power supplies. Um, uh, different terminologies. Uh, and that's a great way. This is also good for, you know, I think this was uh, three amps or so. Now say, what if you needed more than three amps? Well, over here, I've got a bigger uh, transformer, bigger power supply. Um, and this will take a larger, or, or supply a larger number of amps. Basically it looks, it's, it functions just like this guy, but you can see the big bigger heat sinks and so on. This will do up between eight to 10 amps. So that's really good for uh, as you get into powering larger 
thingamabobs like, for instance, uh, some of these larger servo motors, some of the uh, robotic servos that I have. This guy here, for instance, this will take up to uh, 11 volts itself and needs lots of amps. So that would be a good job for that. All right, <clears throat> now your motors like this, your DC motors, chances are they are gonna be supplied directly from the battery, um, but not like just directly wired to them. They're gonna be powered probably through, oh, yeah, you're gonna have one of these, possibly one of these. There's some other options as well as you get into the better, bigger and better ones. These can, can supply lots of amps and uh, you don't power these right off your Arduino, right? You uh, put power, directly into them over here, you'll see, usually you will see like a B, a B minus and B plus. That's the power from the battery and then to the motor. So that goes directly from the battery there and then to the motor. And then the Arduino attaches to it on this side, which is just basically just logic to control, you know, PWM signals and so on. Um, so that you are controlling the, uh, you know, speed and direction of the motor from here, but the power is never going through the Arduino. Um, same thing if you are doing things like with servos over here. Where's the servo? All right. Servos can draw power as well, certainly more. Arduino only really wants to supply something like 0.5, you know, just like 500 milliamps or something like that, whereas some of these things can pull, draw a lot more than that. And so ideally, See, the, the servo motor is going to have a signal, a ground, and power. And power should not be coming from the Arduino. Power should be coming from, like, your UBEC or from a battery that's uh, in that 5, 6 volt range, depending on what the uh, servo motor is doing. But you don't want to power your servo motors directly from your Arduino. It's just really not meant to have that kind of power running through it. So your DC motors, your servo motors, your, um, what else do we have here? Uh, it might be LED strips or any kind of, like, higher logic, uh, excuse me, higher power devices. You know, maybe it's a radio, maybe it's, uh, you know, maybe all sorts of different things. But don't power those directly off your Arduino. Yeah. Um, like I said, Arduinos on here, yeah, you can get five volts on them. You can get your five or 3.3 volts, but they're not really designed to pr provide a lot of power through there. Now, um, yeah, you can always, you know, like I said, you know, in parallel, you can go to here, there, your V in, and that same thing can be powering other things because you can be pulling, you know, it's just like your house, uh, in, in your house, you know, you plug lots of things into the socket, which is on the other side, but don't have them pulling, you know, lots of power directly out of, you know, the five volt supply and things like that on your Arduino, or else you're going to really, really stress that out. Um, it doesn't matter if it's an Arduino or a Uno or a Mega or a Redboard, whatever, just don't fry your Arduinos by trying to power all your devices off of them. Um, if you have just, you know, a simple Bluetooth uh, radio or an XB or something like that, chances are they're designed around the amount of power that an Arduino can supply. But your, you know, your motors, uh, especially your servo motors, especially your DC motors, uh, you know, if you're running lots of high powered LEDs that, you know, if chances are if it's like one of these addressable strips, chances are it has power in and then some logic in. You want to supply the logic from the Arduino, but not the power from the Arduino. Um, one thing to remember though, as you're powering everything, everything does need to have a shared ground, you know, so your minus somewhere, you know, that's all kind of coming in the same way so that everything has that same reference. Uh, so everything needs to have a, you know, common ground on there so that all your logic does what it thinks it's going to be doing. Unplug that before I accidentally spark myself. And that's it for today. So remember, lots of batteries, you know, what battery you need is up to you. Uh, it's going to depend, you know, if you have say this bat, this, uh, motor here is a 12 volt motor, but can handle up to 18 volts. So what's going to happen at 18 volts, it's going to have, uh, it's going to be a lot faster. Um, maybe a little bit more powerful depending on, you know, the design of the motor. Um, you know, some of your servos have a wide range of, uh, operation. So that's really going to be determine what your, your overall, you know, your battery is going to be. And also like how much weight your robot or your arch, your, your plane or your BB-8 or whatever can carry. Um, you know, you could use all kinds of different batteries to do it, but, uh, it's up to you. Hopefully that's some good advice till next time.